Kylie Jenner has made headlines after her recent appearance at Paris Fashion Week. This is what happens when teardrop filler goes wrong. Look what's happened to Kylie. It looks like she might have had too much dermal filler. She's developed some edema or some swelling. This right here is called festooning. Kylie Jenner. Kylie Jenner. Kylie Jenner. Kylie Jenner. What's going on with Kylie Jenner's lower lids? Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Amir Karam, board certified facial plastic surgeon and founder and creator of Karam MD Skin. I specialize in facial rejuvenation, which basically means I help people look as young as they feel. And today we're gonna talk about a very timely and very interesting topic slash phenomenon, but I'm gonna give you guys some pearls that are going to help you learn and put perspective around this particular topic. It's literally consumed social media. I mean, I just got wind of it literally, literally just today. So I'm responding to it with this particular video. But what's fascinating about it is so much interest, so much fascination with her lower lid and a lot of speculation about what it can and cannot be, etc. This is my point of view on the, on the topic. So number one, this topic of lower lid filler and the complications that can happen with it is a very important and very good topic. Probably something that I have alluded to hundreds of times, but I was planning, quite honestly, to have a whole video to it. And this is a great opportunity to share some of that wisdom around that, because I have a lot of experience around it. But just to put the Kylie Jenner thing in perspective. So first of all, what I see is photo is taken with overhead lighting, which is extremely harsh, which is nearly impossible to have anything look smooth or perfect from that point of view. It doesn't look like anything too serious, or anything too dramatic or anything too hardcore. Maybe there's some filler put in there. Maybe there wasn't. Maybe some filler is, is doing what fillers do in that particular area, which is absorbing a little bit of fluid, creating a little bit of swelling, creating a little bit of edema. So as a result, you get some you know, potential regularity. Doesn't quite justify the fascination that everyone's having with the topic and all of this kind of hoopla around it, quite honestly, I don't understand it. But what I do understand is that this phenomenon, this problem with lower lids fillers is not new. It's not something that anyone who injects filler is doing it because they don't know how quite to inject it. Although there are some pearls which I'm gonna share with you how to diminish that potential with that. But ultimately, this is a consequence of either a little bit too much filler being placed, which happens, or the inherent and intrinsic characteristic of hyaluronic acid fillers like Restylane, Juvederm, you know, all these, these varieties. It's a characteristic of them to absorb water. And the absorption of water is something that gives the filler a little added boost when you're trying to get volume, which is ultimately what you're trying to do. But there's certain parts of the face which are a little bit more unforgiving, right? I mean, you put a filler into the lip or the cheek, for example, it absorbs a little bit of water. Well, what happens? Your cheek looks a little bit bigger. Your lip looks a little bit fuller. You know, it's not an irregularity or it's not like a contour problem. The problem that it comes down to the lower eyelids is underneath that region, this area right here where you inject filler, which is the infraorbital rim, is nothing but bone. I mean, touch it, it's just bone. So when you have a hard surface, you have bone, you put something like a filler that has a tendency to swell. That's what fillers do. Again, it's a sponge, it absorbs water. When it swells a little bit and it's sitting on top of a hard surface like bone, well, guess what it's going to do? It's going to go up. And when it goes up a little bit and rises, it might rise slightly higher than the cheek, which is below it. It might rise a little bit higher than the eyelid that's below it. And as a result, it could look like a little bit of a deformity, like a little puffiness in that area. And because the lower eyelid normally along the orbital rim is actually a little bit of a hollow, anything that looks like a convexity or puffiness in that area immediately looks weird, immediately looks off. So this is something that is fascinating and actually really, really a, a good topic for you to understand because I think we've kind of screwed up a lot of our understanding about what good volume means and what adequate volume means, etc. because we've got these fillers in our hands and we can do whatever we want with them. But this is what it comes down to. The natural lower eyelid, I'm talking 20 year old, 30 year old lower lids. The natural look to that area is slightly volume deficient, actually volume deficient. What I mean by that is if you take completely full and you take post filler full 
that's an unnatural state. It doesn't normally exist. I've got a ton of 20 something year olds floating around in my life because my kids are at the end of high school and I've got two in college. So I see a lot of young people and it became so clear to me, so aware, male or female, that the kind of natural composition of this area is that you have a transition which is, you know, a little convexity followed into the cheek. What's amazing is, and I'm 100% guilty of this because I was one of the first truly one of the first adopters of using filler in the tear trough in Southern California. I really was. I was like right during my fellowship, I really understood the concept that volume is an important part of looking refreshed and I started using filler along with fat transfer, you know, fat transfer for my surgical patients, filler for my non-surgical patients. I was doing it, I was getting referrals literally from every dermatologist and other plastic surgeons. Med spas, forget about it, I was, you know, everyone was sending me their patients because I was one of the few guys doing filler in this area, I felt good. I felt like I was doing a great service by putting it in, but here's a few things about it. Number one, I've always used Restylane in that area, which has a little bit of a lower absorption quality to it versus Juvederm, because there was a short stint that I actually started doing a little bit of Juvederm, just because I you know, had a ton of Juvederm in my practice. I was using it for different areas like lips, et cetera. I'm like, oh, why not use it on the eyes? And immediately I realized that that, that Fluid retention aspect of Juvederm is significantly greater than it is for Restylane. And I was, even though I was filling to the same levels that I would normally was filling, I was creating a lot of puffiness and deformity. So it didn't take long. I mean, literally within a month, I just stopped using Juvederm. A lot of people have learned their lesson the hard way as well. But what was interesting is, as a surgeon, I realized that the answer is not always completely to fill the lower lid because there are situations where you've got excess skin and you've got puffiness. And if you fill too much in that area, then you're gonna get something that looks a little odd. So I avoided a lot of the potential problems with that area because I never injected a lot. In fact, I've trained and I've talked about this in multiple you know, forums and conferences and written about it and talked about it on video, etc. that normally for the tear trough area, you don't want to inject. And keep a note of this because if you go to your injector and they want to put a lot in, this is going to be a reference point for you. Normally, you don't want to put in more than 0.2 to 0.3 maximum per lower lid. If you're requiring much more than that, you're gonna risk getting some of these consequences. Consequences to the lower lid area, generally speaking, are gonna be that edema that causes that raised area, and also Tyndall effect, which is an optical property of light hitting something that is translucent under the skin as opposed to you know, something like fat, which is opaque under the skin. And that Tyndall effect creates a bluish green color under the lower lids because of the way the light interacts with it, again, against bone. So Tyndall effect, edema are two of the things that can absolutely happen to people who get lower lid fillers. And honestly, in our practice, because we're doing, you know, the patients are coming in for surgery, there might be three to five patients every single week that we're treating. And how do you treat this particular problem? You treat this problem by putting in an enzyme. The enzyme is hyaluronic acid reversal, which is hyaluronidase, is just a brand name for it, but it breaks down hyaluronic acid. And because the fillers are, generally speaking, the hyaluronic acid-based fillers, it's a potent and very quick and efficient way of reducing the problem. So let's just say hypothetically that in the case of Kylie, that this might be you know, a little bit of edema from the filler issue. Let's just speculate for a moment. Well, guess what? no problem, a little bit of enzyme reduces the whole thing and potentially if you want to get rid of it, you can get rid of it completely. But I think part of the thing, and I think this is something important, let's just assume for a moment that, that is what is actually going on there. As a patient, we hear this all the time, patients talk about overhead lighting and freak themselves out completely because you get, go into your bathroom especially and you have lights coming off the ceilings or you have these you know, sconces and it shines the light overhead and as a result, every little irregularity on your face is shown as a contour problem. So what that leads to is a lot of people running to their dermatologists, med spa, plastic surgeons, whoever, and asking them to fix these irregularities. And then they're sitting there in front of me, for example, and I'm looking at them and I'm like, I don't really see anything. I don't see anything notable that requires us to do anything about. And then they'll show me a picture of themselves that they snapped in the bathroom, showing this overhead light situation. And it looks a lot like the photo with Kylie where there's a little bit of an irregularity and they're worried about it and freaking themselves out about it. I'm pretty sure that under normal circumstances, under normal lighting scenarios, that wouldn't even be seen. You just happen to catch the light in the right way. But bottom line is, if you are 
obsessing over some of these, you know, sort of light related things or you take a photo of yourself in certain lighting and it shows an irregularity or shows a contour issue, trust me when I say that, don't go chasing that. Now, if you have a real puffy problem under your eyes and that is something that you can see under any lighting scenario from fillers being placed, etc., by all means, know that there's a solution and a simple one and go after it and get it fixed because truly it looks weird. It really does. And it has changed my own position. As I said, I was like a big proponent of lower lid filling, you know, extensively and all, you know, trying to make it perfect and smooth and all that stuff. I've realized that less is more, a little bit of improvement goes a long way in, in terms of making you look less tired, but you don't need perfection in any of these things to look better. In fact, when you start to, you know, sort of like flirt and dance with with this notion of perfection, invariably you're gonna be on the other side of the line, which is a very, very thin line. You're gonna flip on the other side and you're gonna find yourself becoming overfilled, which doesn't go away with time. I've done a lot of videos on this topic and some of the consequences of filler use over time. And as a result of that, leading you down a path that is basically reversible because these fillers do not completely go away and they do transition to some scar tissue and collagen, which makes it impossible to get rid of. So best to avoid that problem. So here are some guiding principles, generally speaking on this topic. Number one, less is more, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 per lower lid, that's it. If you've got puffiness and if you've got excess skin and let's say you're in your late 40s and early 50s, chances are filler alone isn't gonna do the trick. You're probably gonna need a blepharoplasty in addition to either fat transfer or some filler being added to kind of smooth the, the hollowness, which I've done, I think, a very good video on this topic on how to manage lower eyelids, which you should definitely watch. So less is more, just treat a little bit of the volume loss, that's it. Don't do this regularly, that's number two. Don't do this regularly. This lower lid area hangs on to filler, feels like forever. I have patients who are like five, 10 years out, and they've still got exactly what we're describing here, and they think it's all because of allergies, because of their sinuses, et cetera. They've chalked it up to something completely non-related to the filler they had five or 10 years ago, and sure enough, I put it in some enzyme, the problem goes away because it's still filler from that time ago. But if you see that problem, know that there's a solution, but the point is, filler in that area is not like the same as filler in the cheek or the lips. You definitely should not be doing that more than like once every year, year and a half, two years even, and being very, very conservative and gentle. I cannot tell you how many people I've turned away throughout my career who keep coming back to me wanting to put more volume under their eyes and it's like a solid no. Final piece to that is, if you're suffering from this and you're dealing with this and you're knowing that this is uh, you know, what's happening to this area, just find a, a reputable doctor that you're comfortable with who has experience with this and they can tone down the level of filler or remove it all the way completely if, if that's your decision. And as a result, it will look much better, much more natural. And finally, I think the final point is, folks, let's give uh, Kylie a break. I mean, Jesus, it's like, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of speculation from my colleagues and, and uh, people in the industry, you know, I mean, just swarming this topic to try to pick apart or kind of like I told you so, or this is a consequence kind of a situation. It just doesn't feel very fair or very, um, very nice. But at the end of the day, you know, it's a cost of, I guess, being famous and cost of being in the spotlight, but it doesn't uh, justify it in this particular situation, in my opinion. All right, folks, I hope you guys learned something there. I hope you got some good perspective on the topic of lower eyelid filler, what to do about it, what are the consequences, how to avoid some of these things. If you haven't already, hit subscribe, follow along, send this to some uh, friends who might benefit from this as well. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I will do my best to answer as many of them as possible. If you enjoyed it, hit like. All right, folks, until next time, Dr. Amir Karam, good chatting with you.